Well, South Africa's largest iron ore producer, Kumba Iron Ore, reported a jump in production volumes at the start of 2023. For more on this and the latest market performance, we're joined by SABC Markets presenter Nastasia Aronson. Nastasia, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. So uh, just a little bit of a background when mm. it comes to uh, Kumba Iron Ore. This one is valued at... 143.9 billion rand on the JSC. It is a subsidiary of uh, Anglo-American. So what we did see here was a 14.9% increase in production volume. And this was on the back of improved recovery from its Columella mine, which is located in the Northern Cape. And because it is a subsidiary of um, Anglo-American, it does export to countries, well, iron ore, uh, it exports that to countries in uh, China, Japan, uh, South Korea, some European countries, as well as the Middle East. And what was quite interesting here was the comments coming out of that particular production report where the CEO is remarking that the improved economic activity that we are seeing in China that should uh, drive demand, which uh, supports their ability to be able to export. On the back of that, with the disruption of Transnet's rail and port services, how has that impacted the figures somewhat? So this one here, I mean, their full year guidance is dependent on Transnet's ability to perform because yeah. you need to be able to move uh, your iron core or your mine products uh, and export it at least to where you can um, you move it out. So what was uh, a relief here is that the total supplies is still within guidance. So we're still looking at between 37 to 39 million tons and the total production again within guidance 35 to 37 million tons. And this is if you exclude um, the waste scrapping. Mm -hmm. So even though they saw an increase in their ability to export um, the um, iron ore via the uh, Transnet uh, facilities, what was exported is still below guidance. And the reason we saw that 3% increase is that Transnet uh, was maintaining the railway lines, which was great. But also uh, we saw Kumba Iron Ore um, Im uh, implement a very successful spraying program. So last year they did mention that they were impacted by locusts. So yeah. they had to do a spraying program. So um, that has worked out in their favor. So now we're starting to see that they finished stock is still a little bit higher. It's 2.6% higher. And the whole point is that you don't want to have um, stock sitting at your mines and not being able to move. If we go back to last year's annual results, the whole issues within Transnet and the inability to move um, some of the, um, the, of the produce cost um, Kumba Iron or about 10 billion rand. Mm -hmm. And at the time, Bumizi Galala, who is the CEO of Kumba Iron Ore, had remarked that uh, Transnet's function Function, um, has been quite significant. So we saw a drop in earnings. Uh, we saw dividend come down. I think it was 56% uh, lower than it was. We're getting reactions from all over. What's the market's reaction to these updates? So about a couple of hours ago, if you look at the share price, so we're going to put a, uh, a chart on screen for the viewers to see. Uh, if you look at the share price about a couple of hours ago, it was about 3% lower. And because I mentioned that Kumba Iron Ore is a subsidiary of Anglo-American, Anglo-American was 4% uh, lower as a result. I've given you a one-month chart. Um, and the reason I've done this is because when you look at the one month chart, I've taken into consideration um, some of the, you know, behavior, the trading patterns when it comes to this one. Uh, traders have been concerned about production guidance and volume and everything hinging on uh, on Transnet, where some uh, investors late last year were saying, well, something has got to give here. It's either we're going to be concerned about lower production, or if you ramp up production, you're going to be sitting with um, higher stockpiles. So this is the one month picture, a bit of an up and down picture. Uh, we've seen our volume sort of increase and, and, and decrease to a certain extent. And again, that is, I guess, in anticipation of what is happening with the global picture iron ore prices, but as well as any kind of indication that we can uh, see when we look at some of the resources when it comes to concerns around Transnet. Yeah, well, speaking of picture, what's the global and local market picture looking like for today? 
So uh, lower when we look at the uh, global side of things, but that is as a function of what is happening uh, with some of the concerns around uh, possible recession and uh, persistent inflation. We are having uh, a flurry of earnings coming through from Europe and the US. European markets are lower. Uh, we were lower as well, about a tenth of a percent, and that's primarily because of the resources, uh, which was the primary driver uh, pulling us a little bit lower. Um, and that is, of course, seeing the uh, production reports coming out of uh, Kumba Iron or Anglo-American as well as Anglo-American Platinum. Mm -hmm. But then uh, broadly, we are seeing the dollar lift up somewhat, and that is being driven by the uh, economic data that we are expecting. We are expecting Q1 GDP numbers coming out of the US on Thursday. So that will give us an indication of how the economy is going, but also earnings season gives investors an ability to see how the underlying economy is performing due to how the companies um, report. Nastasia, it's always a pleasure having you here. Thanks for that update. Nastasia Aronsa giving us the latest in local and global markets.